Well, this next video in modern times probably doesn't have a whole lot of practical uselessness to it or usefulness to it due to the fact that um, you can buy a Chicom LCR meter off eBay literally for $20 or even less. So um, this is a method that would have been used say 30, 40, 50 years ago by somebody who maybe didn't have enough money to buy one of the big um, transistor testers, say like a Sprague TO series, TO4, TO5, TO6, or later on the Sprague Transfarad, or even say like that Century capacitor checker that I have, which was a kit, and then there was also some Heath kit kits back then too, but all those were in real money of those days were quite expensive. So if you wanted to test capacitance, you had to kind of devise a little bit cheaper method. So what a lot of people did was they would dig around their parts box and they'd find themselves this low voltage transformer. Usually they would take like the um, 6.3 volt filament winding from a tube transformer. I happen to have this little tiny 7.4 volt transformer that I believe came out of an old um, arcade game that I stripped back when I was about 14 or 15 years old and you put a variable resistor which I'm using my decade box and then also you put the capacitor in series with that and basically what you do is, is you balance the um, voltage drops across the two resistances and that would give you the capacitive reactants well, actually, what I mean is you balance the voltage drop across the capacitor to the known resistance. That way, you know, obviously, in a series circuit, if you have two resistors that are the identical value, then you have an identical voltage drop across them. So you can figure out what the actual capacitive reactance is of that capacitor at 60 hertz, since that's what you're testing this at, um, by putting it in line with the variable resistor and once your voltages match between the two then you know what your capacitive reactance is and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to test for the capacitive reactance here and we'll see how accurate this method is and you know back in the day everybody this is pretty much how most people did it unless you were a radio TV, TV repair guy that for a living you were repairing equipment you needed something better than this to test whether that capacitor has drifted or not and I've found myself especially recently with all the testing that I've done after building my ESR meter and everything else I can almost tell just by um, a capacitance check if that capacitor is going to be any good or not. I've found that um, usually if that capacitor has dropped say 10% from its um, labeled value or more and more than likely it's no good. There's something wrong with it. It'll end up being leaky or the ESR if you're dealing with say an electrolytic or a tantalum or a monolayer ceramic. Um, the ESR will be through the roof and for whatever you can always tell that usually when you do the capacitance check but you know I, I've gotten to the point where I test capacitors about 10 different ways anymore just in case. But anyways I'm going to demonstrate this method here I'll try and hopefully be able to get this all in the camera, what I'm doing, and not have my big arm in the way. So, essentially what you do is, I've got all these resistances out now, to make sure those are all off. So, essentially what that means is, the, uh, the um, substitution box is now a dead short, so there will be no more to drop across it. I'll get my transformer and as you can see um, the Keithley meter is reading the voltage drop across the capacitor and then my Klein meter is reading the uh, voltage drop across my um, substitution box. So we'll start off at a high value and work our way down see where we end up Okay, obviously we need to go lower. 
Okay. Well, a little bit closer, but we still need to go lower. Yeah, still need to go lower there. Uh, let's see here. Yep, still need to go lower. And actually, right there is 40K. Now, if you look at that, notice it's 7.42 and 0.72. So, from that, you can interpolate that maybe if you go 10 times lower, or in other words, 4K, that's going to bring you pretty close. So, 4K, where are we at? Okay, we're pretty close, but now it's still just a little bit higher across the capacitor or across the uh, resistance box than it is across the capacitor. So, from here on out, we go right down the line, try 4K. Okay, now at 4K, Notice the numbers changed. Now we're higher across the capacitor. So now we need to, from there, we need to go in small steps, add a little bit more. There's 400. We know that we're between 3 and 4K now. Okay, so 400 brought a little bit closer. We'll add another 300. That brought it real close. So we'll skip 200 and go to 100. Let's see. Yep, that's getting pretty close. So now we go over to the tens. Start off at 10 ohms. What do we got there? That's pretty close. Drop that off and go to 20. Okay. better. 30. Boy, we're doggone near right on at 30. So we'll add 1 ohm. Take the 1 ohm back out. We'll add the 4 ohms and see what happens. We're so close. Okay, the 4 ohms is probably just a bit too much, so we'll go 3 ohms. So you got that last digit switching back and forth. If I had a meter with one more digit, we could get that even closer yet. Let's try 2 ohms. We're so doggone close that basically you're seeing just more noise, just the, the meter kind of jumping around more than anything. So that right there... Basically, the voltage drops across those two, well, the resistor and then the capacitive reactance, which is essentially the capacitive resistance, are identical. So now what I'll do, I don't really trust the resistance numbers on my substitution box because each one of those switches adds a little bit of resistance too. So to make this as accurate as possible, I'll unplug this. And then disconnect everything. And directly read the resistance across this resistance box. Okay, my lead resistance is at zero. resistance first. Yep, we're at zero there. So what do we read? 3.84 kilo ohms. Okay. So we've got 3.84 kilo ohms. Back this, I'm going to move this down to my paper now. You're going to loud noise here until I get it there. Okay, so our formula for capacitance, and this is derived from the capacitive reactance formula, is um, 2.65 times 10 to the negative third. So in other words, you take that decimal point, you move it to the negative point, negative direction, 
three point three places. So it's 0 0.00265 divided by the capacitance reactance. The capacitive reactance is 3.84 kilo ohms. So we'll go 0 0.00265 divided by 3.84 K. And I'm no good at math in my head, that's why they invented calculators. So here we go. Okay, and here is what we came up with. Now you move those decimal points over six places. So I'll get this down on there and we'll count it together. One, two, three, four, five, six. That gives you 0.69 microfarads. So what was this capacitor rated at? I don't know if you can see it in the video or not. So here it is, 0.68 microfarads. So actually, that's a reasonably um, accurate method of testing that, and obviously not nearly as quick as taking your capacitor meter and hooking the leads up and mindlessly getting a reading. But basically, this is what your capacitance meter is doing. It may not use 60 hertz, I'm not sure what. I know like the higher end ones that measure dissipation factor and everything else, you can actually choose which um, frequency you're using. If it's, say, like aluminum electrolytic, I think they go maybe like twice the line frequency, 120 hertz, because that's what you would have, say, with like a full wave rectifier circuit. But essentially, they're just doing electronically what I just did right here. So that just more for, uh, I guess, more for education than anything. Nobody's really going to ever do this today, other than maybe somebody like me just to, enjoys doing this sort of thing. But I just thought that I would um, show you a way you could actually test capacitance if you had no capacitor meter at all, and maybe you had a capacitor for some reason that you wanted to test. This is how you would do it.